What's up guys and welcome to day 41 of the 100 days run streak challenge. My name is Jeremy, you are in the marathon experience and today we're going to discuss if whether or not you should buy any of those shoes with the carbon fiber plates on it. Let's go! It's getting harder and harder to deny it. The new enhanced shoes, starting from Nike and Vaporfly and Alphafly, they really changed a lot the way elite runnings are performing records at the moment. I made a video yesterday about the world record on half marathon and how it got beaten up by 29 seconds. And during the same race, actually four person actually have beaten the previous record. This whole happened in Valencia on the 6th of December 2020. And that was for the half marathon. But on the marathon, there was actually 30 people who ran below two hours and 10 minute mark, which is something that experts seem to consider as very rare. I'm not an expert by the way, I just looked at those articles online and I found that it seems to be pretty rare that such a big group of people could achieve such a fast time. And that brings a lot of questions regarding what some people call technological doping or unfair advantage. And although I think that it's very important to have this discussion at the elite level and it's important that some regulation and institution take some measures and define what should be allowed and what should not. And honestly, I have no beef in this. Like, I have, I have no clue what should be allowed, what should not be, what is considered as unfair, what is considered as fair. Honestly, I, I don't know. I'll, I'll let the expert judge that. What I'm really wondering is, should the average runner, like, like I am, and maybe like you are, should we consider buying those very enhanced shoes or not? I think the discussion is kind of worth it and it's kind of interesting to consider how far do you want to go in giving yourself a little edge in order to go faster or run longer, etc, etc. I think the first question is definitely about the price and the money you're willing to spend on a shoe. Definitely, if your budget is kind of tight and you only have like a hundred dollars or equivalent to dedicate to your pair of running shoes, don't even look at those shoes. I mean, they're always like double this price. And honestly, I think if you have a very few amount of money I would not invest so much into shoes knowing that you can find perfectly good shoes at the hundred dollar mark with no problem at all and give you a lot for the money that you won't spend in it but obviously if money is not an issue and you just want to purge on anything fancy that you can find then obviously go ahead and try one of those alpha fly or vapor fly or any of the fancy shoe that you can find on the market if you only consider this question from the money angle but I do think that actually there is something else than that and that's probably something that not a lot of people are saying I see a lot of people like a lot of people on YouTube for instance all of articles and blogs and stuff talking how those Vaporfly or Alphafly change the life and change the way they're running etc etc I myself consider that it would actually be a mistake for most of the people to actually go and buy those shoes. The reason for that is that I like what's called a hidden bonus so when I do something I like to be able to perform the best I can with me training on me, investing on me, and making all the best effort to be the best version of what I could be. And I try to keep those hidden bonuses with me. So I know that at some point, if I need it, I could take those hidden bonuses and in the context of running, I could take those shoes and maybe shorter my time on 10K, 5K, half marathon, a marathon a little bit. So for instance, I would very much love in 2021 to be able to run a marathon in less than three hours and 30 minutes. I think it's gonna be my target for next year. But what I know for sure is that if I ever achieve this time, I want it to be without those very fancy shoes. The reason for that is not that I consider it as unfair. Obviously, it's fair. It's on the market. You want to buy it. It's not like you're competing with elites anyway. So that's it's not a problem. It's completely fair. What I don't want to do, it's more like a mental game. I feel like I would like to be able to say, okay, whatever I want, I'll take those shoes and I'll take three minutes off my marathon time, for instance, just because those shoes are better. So I like to keep into my head that, okay, the time I'm doing right now is actually three minutes longer than what it could be if I had those shoes. So now I'm going to try to end aim at 3 hours and 30 minutes, knowing that if I actually achieve this time, I'll be able to actually do 3 hours and 27 minutes. It might be stupid because obviously you can't quantify a new pair of shoes in terms of minute less. I'm not saying that Alpha Fly means 5 minutes less on a marathon time or anything like that. There's no studies about this, there's nothing proving anything about going faster or longer or anything like that. It's a psychological effect and I think that rather than just jumping on the next trend, jumping on the next a new opportunity to get 30 seconds off some of your times easily just by buying something. I think it's even more powerful if you keep this as a hidden bonus, like you know it's in your back pocket, like you can use it at some point if you need to, but having it in the back pocket is actually better than actually using it, I believe. So 
That's my take on this, on whether or not you should buy one of those fancy shoes with carbon plates. Let me know in the comments if you have the same thoughts or if you have purchased one of those or if you haven't and what are the reasons behind any of those decisions. Also, if you enjoyed this video and if you thought it gave you some value, please give me a thumbs up. It will help a lot to push this video to more viewers. Now we can move on to the run streak update of the day. Today my weight was at 78.2, so slightly bumped now. Since, since two days ago I was doing a cheat meal, which usually starts to show up on my weight like 24 to 48 hours later. But that's quite normal. Cheat meal was really good anyway, so no regrets there. Hopefully it will start going down either tomorrow or the next day. And I'm still on track for my weight loss goal for this 100 days challenge. And today we run with Margot our 10k. Margot did an, another extraordinary performance, even better than what she did two days ago in the video that I published. She managed to go below the 56 minute mark for a 10k. So really kudos to her, she's really performing very well. I mentioned it in some other videos, but basically she's doing a half run streak where she runs every other day. She's really managing to lower her time and increase our effort a lot and that would maximize our progression a lot in the next days and weeks and months. By the way, if you are joining the channel right now, I am in the middle of a 100 days run streak where I run a 10k every single day. I also upload a video on YouTube every single day about my progress, feedbacks, tips, advice, etc. So if you want to be part of the journey, go ahead and hit subscribe, hit the notification button and I'll see you tomorrow.